The Canon 6D Mark II has been my favorite camera of all time. But recently, something unexpected happened. In today's world, there's no such thing as a bad camera. They just don't exist. Every camera is great, but there are a million different camera models from a million different manufacturers, and that can be a bit overwhelming. So what it means to find the best camera is to really find what suits your specific needs the best. So this is gonna be a little bit longer than my normal videos, but there are a ton of EOS R reviews out there. And so with mine, what I wanted to do was share my specific situation, because if you're in a similar situation, then I think this will be really helpful in making your decision on what the best camera might be for you. I got my 6D Mark II in 2017, and while I love it, this was the camera that really started off the trend of internet hate for Canon. And basically for the past few years, anytime Canon releases a camera, it's met with pitchforks from the online community. And then it kind of dies down. A few months go by, people start actually using the camera. And then you hear a bunch of reviews where everyone's like, this is actually a pretty good camera. This is the most underrated camera of the year and that kind of stuff. And with as many negative reviews as there were for the 6D Mark II when it first came out, I love mine, it's the best. It's a full frame camera with a flip out LCD. It gets great image quality for both photos and videos. It's got Canon's dual pixel autofocus. It's built like a tank. I've used mine all over the world in like every weather condition you can think of and it's never let me down. It's such a good, simple, fantastic, just a great camera to use. Like I really love this camera and it makes me sad to see how negatively it's often reviewed. But for the past six months or so, I found myself at least once a week, if not more, thinking that things would be easier if I had a second camera. So you might have guessed, if I'm holding my 6D Mark II, I'm filming this on my second camera, which is now the EOS R. And the reason being, there's times like this where I need to show a camera or explain something about a camera on screen, and so I need to have a camera to film the camera and I've been trying to match footage from phones or point and shoots and it just it just doesn't work and it doesn't look the way that I want and then also there's lots of times where I'm working on something or filming something where it'd be easier to just have two cameras filming simultaneously and then cut the footage together instead of doing everything from one angle and then redoing it from another angle because that just takes you know twice as much time and even though I don't do much of it anymore anytime you do event photography or something like a wedding Having two cameras with two different lenses ready at all times does actually make things a lot easier. So having two cameras isn't quite as excessive and unnecessary as it sounds. So when deciding what to get for a second camera, my first impulse was just to get another 6D Mark II. Like, why not? It's a great camera. I know how to use it. I can pretty much use this thing with my eyes closed because I know where every button and every function is. And so just having a second one would be the simplest solution plus in the couple years since it's come out, it's gone down a lot in price. So you can sometimes find these for like crazy low prices. But at the same time, I thought that if I'm gonna get a new camera, why not take a step back, look at what's available, and maybe take this as an opportunity to bring in something new so you can have some new creative options available. And so since all cameras are pretty great now, in deciding what you need, it's important to look at your specific requirements. For me, I had two really clear things that I wanted. First was a full frame sensor, and the second was a flip out LCD. Not always the two biggest features on a camera, but remember, every camera is gonna give me great options, every camera is gonna give me great image quality, so these things are really important. Even though lots of people love their crop sensor cameras, for me, 
I really love full frame, both for photo and video. I love the look of it. I love the depth of field. I love the wider framing that you can get from a full frame sensor. I love the night performance and low light performance. So I'm kind of personally just stuck on full frame. And then the flip out screen, if you have one, you know how useful these are. If you've never had one, you're totally missing out because these are an absolute game changer. And lots of people just say like, oh, it's just for vlogging. And they are helpful when you're in front of the camera to have a flip out screen where you can see yourself. I have the EOS R has a flip out screen right in front of me, which is great because I can see how the shot is framed without having to hook up any other monitors or stop and then check the footage. And it just makes life easier. But even from behind the camera, the flip out screen is really, really helpful because whether you're doing photo or video, if the camera's at a different angle, I have spent enough time trying to like stand up on my tippy toes or with my head like smashed down on the ground, trying to see a fixed LCD on a camera and being able to just see it from any angle really is a total game changer. Plus, since all of these are touchscreen, you can actually operate the camera's controls and shutter and everything just right there. It, it's crazy how much better it is. It should just be a requirement that all cameras need a decent flip out screen like this. For Canon's lineup, that limited me down to three camera options. The 6D Mark II, which I knew would be great, the EOS R, and then the newer EOS RP. And for the sake of budget, even though people really seem to hate the RP when they review it, the real world reviews and feedback are pretty good on it. And since it's the cheapest of the three cameras, that was actually what I was gonna get first. But what did become a deal breaker was when I realized the R and the 6D both use Canon's LPE6 style batteries, which are pretty much like the Canon batteries that are used in everything. There's also a bunch of monitors and recorders and lights and things that use these same batteries. And this became a lot more important than I expected because even though this wasn't one of my initial requirements, having the same battery system is really important for making your life easier. I didn't want to deal with separate batteries, separate chargers. Does this camera have its batteries charged? Does this one have its batteries charged? I just wanted everything to be simple. So I have all of my batteries. I have my same charger. I can use everything with both cameras. So that took out the RP as one of my possibilities. So it was just the 6D and the R. And since I had never used an R in person, I decided to give it a shot. And I thought that if I didn't like it, then I could just return it. And to be totally honest, that is what I expected to do. I thought I would get it, check it out, wouldn't notice that much of a difference. It's about $700 more expensive than the 6D was. Uh, but then when I got the R and I used it, uh, I kind of totally fell in love with this camera. It is an amazing camera. I'm shocked at how good the EOS R really is. So right away, straight out of the box, I did a side-by-side -side image comparison with the EOS R and the 6D Mark II just at 1080p because even though they're both filming at 1080, I wanted to see if there was going to be a difference. And I was actually really blown away by the difference that I saw because again, even though they're both filming at 1080, they do have different sensors. The R comes with a newer sensor, the 6D has an older sensor, but the R also comes with the option to film at all eye compression, whereas the 6D Mark II only does IPB. I'm not somebody who ever really cared about bit rates and stuff before, but when you see the difference, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, it's just a lot more information, a lot more data, which gives you a bigger, richer, cleaner final image. And so side by side, the R really did outperform the 6D Mark II. The EOS R also does open up the opportunity to use Canon's new RF lenses, which look awesome. They're way too expensive for me right now, so I'm not gonna have any RF lenses, but down the line, it could be something that I use. For right now, I've actually just been using all of my EF lenses with the EF adapter on the R. I just leave the adapter mounted to the camera all the time and then swap out lenses like normal and it doesn't get in the way at all. It makes no difference. The lenses work just the same as they would natively. Autofocus, everything is just as fast, just as accurate. So that hasn't been an issue. And then it means that all of my lenses will work with both cameras. So all batteries, all lenses work with both cameras. Something that I hadn't heard about that I found with the R that I really like is it has a clean HDMI out signal. So it's great for external recorders or live streaming. Heather and I do a weekly live stream and 
Having a clean HDMI out means that we can still use the camera's autofocus, which is Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which in my opinion is like the best autofocus available right now. We can still use that during a live stream before we had to just do manual focus and try not to move too much <laughs> because if we moved, we would go in and out of focus. Whereas now it's not an issue, it makes our streams look a lot better. I didn't know that the EOS R had clean HDMI out, so I was really excited when I found out that it did. For more advanced users, the EOS R does have built-in C-Log, which even though I don't color grade my footage usually, I'm really excited to experiment with, and I've played around with it a little bit in the past month that I've had the camera, but basically C-Log is a really flat, high-quality image, and so it's great for color grading, it's great for matching footage between cameras, and it's also great for adding like stylization or trying to boost some dynamic range in your shots. Having that built into the EOS R makes it a lot more comparable to some of the higher end cinema cameras and dedicated video cameras that are out there. And I mentioned batteries before, but since the R uses the LPE6 battery, which is a pretty beefy battery, the battery life on it is way better than any other mirrorless camera that I've ever used. It's not quite the same as the 6D Mark II is, but I've easily gone through an entire day with just one battery. I personally have five batteries total, and between these two cameras, five batteries is more than enough for a full day, maybe even a couple of days, depending on how much you're using them. And the EOS R also comes with an electronic viewfinder, or an EVF, which actually isn't something I was that excited about because I personally have really sensitive eyes and I don't do well with bright lights and flashing lights, especially really close to me. And in the past when I've used EVFs, they actually really hurt. Like I find them really uncomfortable to use, but I was happy to see, no pun intended, that the EOS R has a really great EVF. It's super comfortable to use, it looks great, and one of the benefits that I didn't take into account was since it is a mirrorless camera, you can use the viewfinder during video. Normally that's not something I do because I love that flip out screen, but sometimes, especially if you're out in bright daylight where you can't see your flip out screen, being able to hold your eye up to the viewfinder and still see everything in your frame is super duper helpful. And that was another thing that I just didn't expect to like about this camera. It's not all perfect though. There are a few things that I'm adjusting to. The biggest issue I have with the EOS R right now is actually how you switch from photo to video because usually I do a lot of both and every Canon camera for like the last 10 years has had this perfect switch where it's just right on the back. You don't even need to look at it and you can switch from photo to video. It's like a perfect design. The EOS R got rid of that switch. And so now to switch between photo and video modes, you actually have to press the mode button, then the info button, and then select which setting mode that you wanna go into. And I actually do see the logic from Canon's point of view in this, because what they're trying to do, even though it takes longer to switch between modes, they're trying to make it quicker to switch into specific settings within those modes. So it kind of, takes this dial that used to be on the top of the camera, the mode dial, and it sort of puts it into the menu system to try to more quickly get you between if you wanted to be in shutter speed priority mode for your still photo, but you wanna go into manual for your video, that should make it really quick to do that as you're switching between the two. It's not the end of the world. There is some benefit to it, but I've just found it not as smooth and easy as just having the one switch right there. It is worth noting that if that's something you're worried about, if you're in still photo mode and you press the record button for video, the camera will just default to whatever settings you have saved to the C3 function. So you can program C3 to be whatever, you know, whatever resolution and shutter speed and aperture and all that stuff that you want. And then anytime you need to do something really quick while you're doing video, you can just press record and then it will jump straight to those settings. So that's a really nice, backup to have since it's not as quick to switch between the two modes anymore. There's also a few changes in ergonomics which the more you use the camera makes sense but one thing that I really miss is having a dial on the back of the camera. The 6D Mark II and a lot of Canon cameras have the thumb dial so as you're going through menu settings and as you're going through footage it's super easy to just cycle through. The EOS R did not get rid of that dial but they moved it from the center of the back to the top. So it is still there, all the functionality is still there, but it's not nearly as natural as it was before when it's right next to the LCD screen. We can't talk about the EOS R without talking about 4K. 
this is an area where people really critique this camera and I don't want to be too much of an apologist because I would love full sensor 4K. But here's what I will say about the EOS R's 4K options. First is that it's extremely high quality. The first time that I filmed a 4K video and put it on the computer screen, I was kind of blown away by how clear it was. It literally looked like you could just reach into the screen and like grab the stuff that was there. And I was really impressed with how good that it looks. And that is Canon's explanation as to why they do a crop in factor of almost 1.7 on the 4K is that that gives the best image quality for how the sensor is used. I don't know if that's true. I don't understand all the logic behind it, but I do know whatever it is, the quality is great. I also know that a lot of people who use 4K use 4K on a crop sensor camera. So even though the EOS R does deliver cropped 4K, it's the same as any 4K on any crop sensor camera, pretty much the same. So what I'm going to do is keep the cameras right where they are, but I'm gonna switch the EOS R into 4K and we'll see that crop factor. The 35 millimeter on the 6D Mark II is still much wider, whereas now the 24 on the EOS R is like really tight. The cameras haven't changed position at all. This is just the 4K crop factor. It's also worth noting that the EOS R in 4K can still use dual pixel autofocus. So right now it's face tracking. Both cameras are face tracking. Uh, they should be doing just as good as each other. There shouldn't be any difference between them. The 4K bitrate is also insane on the EOS R. It shoots at 480 megabits per second, which is just this massive file, but there's so much information and quality within that, that it really competes with cameras way above its price point, which is another reason that the EOS R even looked better at 1080 than the 6D Mark II is because the EOS R's 1080 bit rate is 180 megabits per second, whereas the 6D Mark II is 60 megabits per second. So all of the output from the EOS R photo video is just higher quality than the other cameras. So it does look, it just looks so good. <laughs> Everything looks so friggin' good from this camera. I was also shocked by the difference in file size between the two cameras, especially if you're shooting at all eye compression. The EOS R produces massive file sizes, even at 1080, not just at 4K. So one thing that I didn't expect was that I needed to get new memory cards for this camera. You definitely, if you go with the EOS R, need to get a really high capacity memory card that writes at a really high bit rate. And I don't know if this is worth anything to you, but I've actually found in some cases that the 4K crop is helpful. Um, I do all of my YouTube videos at 1080p just because it's an easier workflow, but the 4K option to be able to scale and crop without losing image quality is really, really helpful. Plus, since I normally shoot mostly with prime lenses, when I do go into the 4K crop mode, it kind of crops in, which almost makes it seem like now I'm using a lens with a longer focal length. So there have been a few times where I've needed to get a little closer to a subject and I can't because I'm using a prime lens. And so I just switch it into 4K and now I'm actually a little bit closer. So that's not necessarily a reason to absolutely love cropped 4K, but it is a cool, useful way to use it why you got it. And like most people, I do wish that the EOS R had in-body image stabilization. Canon has said that they are working on it for future bodies, and I'm sure it will be there. The electronic stabilization works pretty well. Um, I haven't had any issues with it, but I would love optical in-body image stabilization that doesn't require you to crop in on the image the same way that electronic stabilization does. And the touch bar. We cannot talk about this camera without touching on the touch bar. So when Canon took away this beautiful switch, they replaced it with this bizarre control known as the multifunction touch bar. Most people, when they review this camera, say that they don't like the touch bar. I'm gonna take the unpopular opinion and say that I actually like the touch bar. It's kind of a cool thing, once you figure out how to use it and it's totally mappable, so you can customize pretty much any function to it. And it's basically three buttons in one. So I have mine set up to control ISO, but I've also used it to control white balance. But right now, if I press one side of the touch bar, it defaults to auto ISO. If I press the other side of the touch bar, it defaults to 100 ISO. 
and then if I move my finger across the touch bar, it just adjusts the ISO manually. You can also set the touch bar so that it's locked until you press your finger on it for one second, and then you can start using it. So that pretty much eliminates you accidentally swiping it and changing a bunch of settings as you're just holding the camera up to your face and stuff. Ultimately, this might not be the most fair side-by-side -side versus comparison between these two cameras because I'm not looking to replace my 6D Mark II. I'm looking to add a camera to my setup that's gonna bring in some new functionality and some new options. The EOS R still is pretty expensive compared to the 6D Mark II, so if you're looking at it purely from a budget standpoint, the 6D Mark II is really tough to beat. If budget is less of a concern and you want the absolute best image quality for your money and you want something that maybe is just a little more geared towards the future with new lenses and new features, then the EOS R definitely makes a lot of sense. Both cameras work great together. The intro of this video was shot with both. I didn't color grade at all. I just cut that footage straight together and it matches up very, very well. But I will say what surprised me most about the EOS R is just how fun it is to use. And there's no quantitative way to like measure the fun of a camera. It's a really comfortable camera to use, like the grip feels good, the buttons feel good, the screen is really big and really nice. It's just like an enjoyable camera. And having a camera that you enjoy using is one of those things that's going to help you to use it more. And that's always a good thing. So right now, if you had to ask me what my favorite camera of all time is still, I would say the 6D Mark II, because as much as I love the EOS R, the 6D Mark II has a track record of reliability for me that no other camera really comes close to. And to be fair to the EOS R, it's not that it can't, it's that it just hasn't had the time yet. So I can imagine the EOS R claiming that title at some point in the near future. And when shopping for cameras, I think that it's always important to be practical. Back when I got my 6D Mark II, I made a video explaining why I chose this camera, even though it doesn't film 4K in a world where everybody seemed to be obsessed with 4K. And I also explained some of the nuances that go into creating and consuming 4K content, because I think that even now, a couple years later, there are still a lot of misconceptions around that. So I guess that's it. I feel like I should say more or go into some really technical details about the two cameras and the EOS R. Um, let me go get my notes.